Hello everybody and welcome to the Code School. If you struggle to find the time complexity of your program or if you are a beginner who is wondering why are we not calculating time in minutes or seconds and why are we using these weird notations like big O, N, N square, log in to calculate time, then you have come to exactly the right place. In this video, we are going to discuss what is time complexity and how do we calculate the time complexity of a program using various examples. So let's not waste any time and get started. So first of all, in computer science, whenever we talk about time complexity, it generally means the number of steps that we need to take in our program to reach the final solution. And we define this number of steps with respect to the size of the input that we get. When I was a beginner, I always had that doubt that why are we not calculating this time in seconds, milliseconds or even microseconds. Uh, well, the reason for this is, this time may depend on, on, on a lot of other factors as well. Uh, like the computer you are using, how many memory our program has available, how many other programs are running at the same time which are competing with our program for resources, how many threads are being used, etc, etc. So to standardize this calculation, we use the size of the input as the parameter to define our time complexity. So let's look at how to find the time complexity using some examples. Friends, suppose we are given an array and we need to calculate the sum of the first element and the last element of the array. Uh, let's look at this example where the number of elements in array is 5. To solve this, we need to first select the first element and then we need to select the last element of the array. Now it's time to take the first step where we add both these elements to get the final result. Now we see that the number of total steps we had to reach the final solution is just 1. Now let's look at another example where the total number of elements in the array is 10. So similarly in this case we select the first element and then we select the last element and then as the first step we add both these elements and we get the final result. Uh, so we see the total number of steps is still 1. So similarly if we increase the array size to 100 or maybe 1000 even then the total number of steps will still be 1. So we can say that the time complexity of this solution is constant or in mathematical terms we can say that the time complexity is big of 1 or simply O of 1. Now let's look at another problem where we are given an array and a number and we need to find if this number exists in this array or not. It's a fairly simple problem to solve. So what we need to do is we start from the first element of the array and check if this element is equal to the given number or not. And we count this as one step. And then we move to the next element and we do the same thing where we check if this element is equal to the given number or not and uh, thus we take another step and then we keep doing it until we find our element. In this case in the fifth step we see uh, that the element is 7 which is equal to the given number. So the total number of steps that we had to take is 5 which is equal to the number of elements in the array. If we increase the size of the array to 10 then following the same method we need to take 10 steps to find our element which is again equal to the size of the array. Now you can say that it's possible that the number 7 is present at the beginning of the array. Does that make it a constant time solution as we now only need one step to reach the solution? Uh, well the answer to this is no because whenever somebody asks you about time complexity of a solution, it is understood that he is talking about the time complexity in worst case possible, which is also called as the worst case time complexity. So in this example, the worst case is that we need to iterate the whole array to find the element and we need to take n number of steps to reach the solution. So it doesn't matter if we find the number at the beginning of the array or in the middle of the array or at the end of the array, the worst case time complexity will be of n. Another thing to notice here is that the number of steps that we take that might be equal to 3 times n or 4 times n plus 3 or 8 times n. In all of these cases, we will say that the time complexity of our solution is of n. Uh, because the number of steps that we are taking in all these cases are linearly proportional to n. Suppose we are given a number 3 and we need to create a 2D array of size 3 by 3 and insert consecutive numbers starting from 1 to this array so that the final array looks like this. So what we need to do is we need to create two loops, one to iterate over the rows and another one to iterate over the columns and fill these positions of the array one by one. And filling one position at a time is counted as one step. So the total number of steps that we need to take for this is 3 into 3 which is 9. Similarly, if the given number is 5, then we need to create an array of size 5 by 5 and fill 25 positions and the total number of steps that we had to take would be 25. Similarly, for 6, we had to take 36 steps. So we can observe that the total number of steps that we have to take is equal to n square for every case. So the time complexity is of n square. 
As a general rule of thumb, we need to check how many nested loops we are running in our code and then multiply the length of these loops to get our time complexity. So in this case, we were running two nested loops, both of length n, and so we multiply these lengths n into n and we get our time complexity which is n square. If we were given a 2D array of size n by m, then our time complexity would be n into m. Another common time complexity is of log n which is observed in cases where we divide the array into two halves for example in binary search and various binary tree problems. So let's look at an example of binary search and see how we get this time complexity. Suppose we are given a sorted array with 8 elements and we need to find if the number 4 is present in this array or not using binary search. Then what we need to do is we first divide this array into two halves which will be our step 1. Now we see if the number 4 is present, it will be present in the first half, not the second half. So we can simply discard the second half and we are left with just 4 elements of this array. Now we can further divide this array into 2 halves which will be our second step. And then we are left with just 4 and 5 as the elements of the array. Now we can further divide this into 2 halves which will give us elements 4 and 5. And this will be our step 3. Now we have got our required element which is 4 in three steps. So as you can see our array is being divided into half at every step till we are left with a single element. So if we are given an array of size n then we will need maximum of log n steps to find our number. This method of cutting the array into two halves is used in a lot of algos mainly in sorting algos like quick sort and merge sort where we observe a time complexity of n log n. Now let's look at some cases where we can observe exponential time complexity. Well, these are mostly recursive algorithms and you should avoid this complexity as much as possible. But let's see an example where we can reach this complexity. Suppose we need to generate all three digit combinations of 0 and 1. For this, we will take a recursive approach where we will start with an empty list and then we will keep on inserting either 0 or 1 to our list. Like you can see in the recursion tree, initially we have an empty list at the root element of this tree. Now we need to make a choice between inserting 0 or 1. So as you can see on the left side of the uh, root element we have inserted a 0 and on the right side of the root element we have inserted a 1. So we, we made this choice between 0 and 1 two times. So we counted as two steps. We had to take two steps to reach to the next level of this tree. Now to insert the second element in these arrays we again need to make these choices and in this process we add four more steps. And then again to insert the third element we need to make 8 such choices and we add 8 more steps and we finally got our required combinations and these are total 8 required combinations. So we see the total number of steps that we have taken to reach this solution is 2 plus 4 plus 8 which is 14. If we have to generate 4 digit combinations then we need to add 16 more steps to this and if we have to generate 5 digit combinations then we need to add further 32 more steps to this. So you can see that as we keep on increasing n which is the number of digits that are required the total number of steps increase by 2 raised to power n. So we can see that the time complexity of this solution is of 2 raised to power n which is an exponential time algo. Now we will discuss the time complexities of some common algorithms and data structures which you should always know at the top of your head as this will make it very easy for you to weigh your options while choosing the best algorithm or data structure to solve the problem in hand. For binary search as we have already discussed the time complexities of log n. Push and pop operations in both stack and queue are constant time operations. All commonly used sorting algos like quick sort, merge sort, heap sort are all of n log n time complexity. To build a binary search tree from a sorted array we need of n time complexity. Searching an element in binary search tree is of log n operation. Building a heap takes off n time complexity. Inserting an element at the end of a linked list takes off n time complexity. Searching an element in a linked list also takes off n time complexity. Inserting an element in a hash map and searching an element in a hash map are both constant time operations. Friends, I cannot stress enough how important it is to remember all these time complexities. So that was it regarding time complexities. If you like this video, please hit the like button below and for more such videos, hit the subscribe button. And if you have any query or any doubt, feel free to ask it in the comment section. Until next time, goodbye and keep practicing.